Hey, what is going on guys? Today, we're gonna be talking about what mechanics you need to begin mastering at what ranks. Now, really quickly, I do wanna say, this does not mean you should have already learned certain mechanics at the ranks that I'm gonna tell you you should learn them at. It doesn't mean that you have to learn them in this order, or you're behind if you don't know these at these certain ranks. It's great to learn these before the rank you get to them. However, this is just going to be a list of what mechanics I think you should be learning at what ranks to start progressing properly within that rank or start winning your games more consistently or to just get better card control with where you're at currently. Let's start this video off with what mechanics you should be working on at every single rank. No matter what rank you are, you should always be working on these things. But before we do that, let's talk about this video's sponsor, Thrustmaster, and what they're offering that will help you improve your mechanics. Thrustmaster just came out with this new controller called the eSwap X Pro Controller. And before we dive into any detail, this is no joke what a mechanical keyboard is to a normal keyboard, but for controllers. It's the mechanical controller, if you will. With its modular design, it allows you to set up the joysticks however is most comfortable for you. One of my personal favorite features about this controller is that the buttons have high quality eSwap tack switches, so you can truly feel that click whenever you push a button. But not only are the buttons next Next level, wait until you see how accurate the joysticks feel. Their next gen mini sticks come pre calibrated to perfection. Even players like Astral, who I formerly coached on Dignitas, agree that these joysticks are unmatched. And if that's not enough for you, it even has a free software you can use to customize the joysticks and triggers even further. And because the team over at Thrustmaster understands what being a gamer means, these controllers also have a menu of buttons along the bottom to allow you to adjust your communication settings without taking your hands off the controller. They even come with extra buttons on the back of the controller that you can map to whatever you want. Grab your own eSwap X Pro Controller for $159.99 from Best Buy using the link in the description below. And now that we've got our own mechanical controller, let's talk about what mechanics everyone should work on at every rank. You should always be looking to improve your boost management so that you have enough boost to do what you need to do. This can be done by focusing on using less boost when you're on the ground or focusing on making your aerials more efficient or passing over more mini pads as you move around the field. But boost management is extremely important and the more you play the game, the more you'll start to realize how much boost you need to do certain things, but you should always be working on minimizing how much boost you're using. You should also be working on demos at every rank. Now, this one's a little bit controversial. A lot of people think demos shouldn't be a part of the game. It's really important to learn how to demo somebody in the proper positioning. Now, you can use these at every rank, but as you get higher and higher in rank, you have to start learning more and more discipline on when to go for these demos and applying them to the right situations or else they're just going to pull you out of position. You should also be learning how to read the ball faster at every rank. So learning how it bounces and understanding which direction it's going to go and how fast based on its bounce before it bounces. Just learning to read the game faster and faster as you get better and better and higher and higher in ranks. Now, the last main thing that I think everybody should work on no matter what rank they are is their recovery. Recoveries. Everybody can work on recoveries. Everybody can get quicker at this. It's a matter of recovering out of what you're doing and transitioning into what you should be doing next. The higher rank you get, the more and more efficient these have to become. It's not a matter of wanting to get better at recoveries. It's a necessity. You have to get better at recovering out of what you're doing and transitioning into what you need to do next faster and faster and faster at every rank that you increase because people are going to punish you quicker and quicker and quicker. So I will have a training pack for each of these ranges of ranks for the mechanics that I think you should be working on in those ranks. Those codes for the training packs will be in the description below. They will also be on screen while I'm playing through them and talking about each rank and what you should be learning at that rank. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and talk about what mechanics you should be learning from the bronze to gold ranks. Now, if your rank falls somewhere in the range of bronze to gold, then it's most likely the fundamentals that are keeping you at the rank that you're at. So at this level, we should be learning powerful hits, learning how to put power on the ball, and just getting really strong hits because people aren't going to be able to keep up with them at this level. It's going to be really difficult for your opponents to deal with these types of balls. So learning to put power on a ball is going to be really beneficial in the long run. We also want to make sure that we're learning how to take basic shots on target from anywhere on the field. This could be all the way down on your side of the field from defense or right in front of the net. We want to make sure that you can put a shot on target because from bronze to gold, if you put a shot on target, odds are it's going to go in. People aren't that great at making saves yet, so it's going to be really easy to find opportunities to place a ball on target where it will go in the net. 
It's also really important at this level to practice your dribbling with the ball on the ground, being able to push the ball around the field and manipulate its movement with your car, keeping it close to you, pushing it in the directions that you want to go, stopping it from the directions you don't. We want to be able to dribble the ball on the ground here so that we can manipulate the ball around the field and to our opponent's net and away from our own net. Another mechanic that's really important that a lot of people overlook is ball camera. It might not be a mechanic necessarily, but it is really, really important that you learn how to play Rocket League with ball camera on. About 90% of high level games are spent with ball camera on because when you're looking at the ball, you're getting information about the play and you're getting to see what's going to happen before it happens. And finally, we should be learning to drift. We should be learning how to control our car through drifts so that we can get tighter turns at this level and make quicker plays, quicker turns. We can go to the ball quicker we can turn away and get out of our opponent's side of the field sooner you really need to learn to drift through your recoveries on your landings or you need to learn to drift to get tighter turns and make quicker plays if you can pull all these off in the bronze to gold level efficiently then you're going to be ranking up through this fairly quickly people aren't going to be able to keep up with you and you're just going to be that much more ahead of the curve Moving on to the Platinum to Diamond rank range, the mechanics that you should be focused on are half flips, which I have a video tutorial on how to do half flips on screen right now. There will be a link in the description and possibly on screen as well. You should also be learning to wave dash. I also have a tutorial for wave dashes on screen here as well. If you want to learn how to do those mechanics, I think it's really, really important that you watch a video on how to do them. And I think my videos explain how to do those mechanics fairly well. You also want to start working on your aerials and more importantly, fast aerials, meaning jumping from the ground to the air in the fastest possible way that will get you from where you are to where you need to be at the ball before your opponent. Now, fast aerialing is not something that's easy to do. I don't expect you to practice it and master it in a single day, but it is something you want to start working on at this level to help improve you. And I do have a video on how to practice fast aerials most efficiently. I will have that on screen with a link in the description as well. Now, we also want to start working on our basic wall plays, whether it be driving up the wall and making a play with the ball on the wall or jumping from the wall to make a play on a floating ball. It's really important that we start to learn how to use the wall efficiently and use it to our advantage to get around our opponents and control the ball into space that we can set ourselves up with and take a shot, make a pass, just overall control the play a little bit better from the wall. Now, you also want to start working on even more powerful hits, meaning we want to start putting the ball with power faster than we were before. We want to start hitting the ball with more power than we have in the bronze to gold ranks because players are going to be a little bit faster. They're going to be a little bit more in control of their car and they're going to be able to keep up with the hits that you were getting in bronze to gold. So we have to start learning how to put even more more power behind our hits. We also want to start learning how to place our shots a little bit better because in the previous ranks, if you put a shot on target, it's likely that it's going to go in. But at this rank, platinum to diamond rank, players are starting to get the hang of it. They're starting to understand how to make these saves efficiently. And so we have to make shots that are placed properly to get around our opponent and make sure that we're making it really difficult for them to get that save. So to do this, you want to practice taking these shots on the far side of the, the net. You want to go far right, far left, top right, top left, low right low left you want to start taking shots and thinking about where you're going to be placing your shot finding the opening that your opponent is leaving and placing your shot in that spot now at this level it's important that we start to learn how to dribble the ball on top of our car we want to be able to control the ball around the field close to us but keeping it on the ground is no longer going to work at this level people are going to start challenging you quicker they're going to start forcing the ball off of you or forcing you to hit it away from yourself so we want to be able to dribble the ball on top of our car so that we can threaten our opponent and tell them them with control of the ball that we can beat them in our position it'll force them to give us more space it will force them to respect us a little bit more and it will just give us a lot more options on controlling the ball if you want to learn more about basic and advanced dribbling then go ahead and check out this video that i have on my channel it goes through all that you need to know about how to dribble and how to efficiently control the ball into the position that you need to dribble it it also has a training pack in there that you guys can use so make sure you check out that video. And finally, for this rank, the last thing that I think you need to work on, and again, these aren't in any specific order, you should start working on your forward flicks, meaning flicking the ball with a front flip or a front flip variant, whether it be a front flip, a front flip to the right, a front flip to the left, just in general, learning how to flick the ball forward so that you can start creating shots on target or you can start getting clears out of defense. Putting this ball up into the air is gonna make it difficult for your opponents to deal with, and it might create a decent enough shot that your opponent can't make the save. If you wanna learn more about 
Flix. Again, I also have a tutorial on Flix. Go ahead and click the link in the description or it will be on screen right now for you to click as well. So make sure that if you wanna learn how to do these mechanics, you're going through these tutorials. I know it's a lot of stuff to take in, but it's really, really important that you know how to practice these things to make sure that you're doing them efficiently. Moving on to champion to the champion three ranks. This I would argue is the area of ranks that you have the most to learn in order to improve. Platinum to diamond is a close second, but I think the champion to champion three range is really where your opponents start testing you and showing you how much more is needed to be able to beat these guys in rank. When you get to this level, you should start working on advanced dribbling with close control on top of your car. So that means dribbling the ball on top of your car and drifting with it or wave dashing underneath it or jumping and catching it or being able to catch it in different areas, different parts of your car, different parts of the field on the wall. This is where you really have to start learning how to control the ball extremely close to you in any situation because at this level, a lot of people have just gotten used to hitting the ball really hard. So there's gonna be a lot of people hitting the ball hard and expecting you to hit it hard. So if you can get that close control with dribbling, then you're going to be catching your opponents off guard and you're going to find a lot more space in the field that you didn't know existed. Now with advanced dribbling also comes advanced flicks. As you get better at dribbling the ball and, and controlling it on top of your car, you're also going to be looking to get better at flicking the ball in different ways. So this is going to include 45 degree flicks. This is going to include musty flicks. This is going to include side flip flicks. Every flick that there is to learn, that's when we want to start really focusing on learning them is this champion to champion three range to give our opponents just more more things to worry about when we're dribbling the ball. Now, of course, you want to start learning how to air roll your car before this level, but this is where you really need to start learning and controlling your air rolls, whether it be air rolling in the air to get a recovery or air rolling to get a certain angle on the ball in the air or air rolling for a power shot to get a different angle off of your shot than your opponent expects. We want to start learning how to really control our car through these air rolls. And one of the best ways to do that is by if you are on Steam, going into workshop maps and playing these workshop maps, air rolling through them the whole time. Unfortunately, these are not available on the Epic Launcher or on console at the moment. Hopefully these will be coming to those soon, but Psyonix has not really given us any information on how they're going to include the work workshop maps into the new free to play update. So I apologize for those of you who can't. If you cannot do these workshop maps, then I suggest you go into free play and you practice air rolling around in the air, holding yourself up and trying to control yourself there, making sure that you can control yourself out of any position into any position or taking off into certain directions with air rolls. So we want to make sure that we're practicing how to control our car through all these air rolls. And since we're practicing all this aerial car control, we wanna start learning how to air dribble. Again, this doesn't mean that we shouldn't learn it before this, but it doesn't really start to be necessary until this level. When you start controlling the ball in the air and you start air dribbling it, you're gonna keep the ball close to you. You're gonna force opponents to jump up and challenge you or sit back and wait for you to possibly shoot it on target with the air dribble. But learning how to air dribble at this level is gonna be super, super beneficial. And it's gonna make your opponents, again, just have more to worry about when they're trying to defend against you. At this level, we also wanna push our shots to be even more accurate so we want to start working on hitting shots that are crossbar in or post and in learning how to take shots from different angles or learning how to put power on shots from different angles as we progress through the ranks it's really important that you continue focusing on your shots and your shot placement and shot power and consistency through every rank because the defenders are just getting better and better and better another mechanic you can start learning at this level that will really benefit you are ceiling shots now this is very similar to an air dribble in the setup but the execution is very very different you don't have to drag the ball you're able to go to the ceiling and fall off the ceiling and use your flip whenever you want because when you fall off of a surface you hold on to your flip as long as you want you don't have to use it within a certain timer but to get this you have to make sure that you fall off the ceiling we also want to start learning to pre-jump bounces because we're learning to read a little bit faster at this level we're learning to get in front of our opponents and we're learning how the ball bounces off of certain surfaces with certain angles and speeds so we want to make sure that we start practicing jumping earlier than we're comfortable jumping before the bounce so that we're reading the ball sooner and we're forcing ourselves to control ourselves to the ball off that bounce sooner than our opponents this includes bounces off the walls or setting yourself up for double taps because backboard defense isn't the greatest at these levels so the backboard's going to be open a lot you want to learn to read these bounces so that you can start abusing that backboard or start abusing the side walls earlier than your opponents and jumping for them and just getting to them quicker than your opponents reading those bounces is going to help you tremendously we also want to start learning intermediate wall plays, coming off the wall to redirect the ball or jumping off the wall to pass a ball to a teammate. Or we talked about earlier air dribbles or ceiling shots. Those are all off the wall. Basically, we just want to continue improving our aerial control from coming off the wall or controlling the ball up to the wall or even catching the ball on the wall. 
clearing the ball off of our backboard. This is where we really have to start focusing on that stuff because players are going to get better at jumping and double tapping. And we want to make sure that we're covering our backboards, even if our opponents aren't covering theirs. This is also the rank that you can really start to think about passing. If your teammates are this level with you, then they're going to have a lot of the same skill sets as you. They're going to understand the game in a similar way, and you're going to be able to start passing to them, and they're going to be in the right positions to receive those passes and pass to you as well. So you want to start thinking about how you can effectively pass coming out of defense or pass on offense. Just starting to learn really how to use your teammates effectively and making sure that you guys are getting the best possible outcome from these team plays with passing, with controlling the ball with your team and just learning to work as a team and so part of that also is learning to redirect because you're taking shots from a pass when somebody passes the ball to you you want to be able to redirect that ball on target or redirect it in a pass back to them so those are some things that we want to start working on at this level as well coming into the grand champ to grand champ 3 ranked range this is a level where everybody can kind of do everything that there is to do in the game but it just comes down to consistency so we really got to start working on the little things we really have to start pushing our mechanics and pushing our abilities and car control and everything else just to make sure that we're creating these small moments where we're pushing ourselves to be more and more efficient or we're getting more and more control in these smaller moments so things you want to start working on at this level are flip resets double flip resets using the backboard to get flip resets air dribble bumps we have to make sure that our shooting is even more efficient than it was before. We have to make sure that we're getting as much power and the best placement as possible. We want to make sure that our clears are efficient. We're getting strong clears to the right places. And you really just want to push yourself to do the most difficult things that you can do. It doesn't come down to the things that you can already do. This is where it comes down to the things that you can no longer do. Because at this level, you should be able to do just about everything. So you want to start pushing yourself to do the things that you specifically have avoided that you can't do. Like, again, double flip resets, backboard resets, air dribble bumps, the difficult things, the really small things that make this game such a beautiful game at the highest level. And one thing that you should really, really do at this level to progress is find a mechanic that you can score with, whether it be air dribble bumps, ground shots, double taps, find a mechanic that you can score with and master it. If you can master one single mechanic that will allow you to score, you can abuse that mechanic as often as possible. And you're going to find yourself scoring a lot more goals because if you can consistently do this mechanic, you're going to be getting the opportunity opportunities in this game and you're going to be scoring that mechanic every single time and your opponents are going to have to make the save and if they don't make the save then it goes in and so you're efficiently creating these opportunities and executing this mechanic every single time you're doing it and you're going to rank up a lot faster because of it. Now finally we've come down to the rank that everybody wants to get supersonic legend. Now there aren't any specific mechanics you should be working on at this level. There isn't anything that you shouldn't already know at this level. At supersonic legend you should have every mechanic under your belt consistently enough to execute it nine out of ten times and that's why it's so important that at grand champ to grand champ three level you're pushing yourself to do things that you've never done before you're pushing yourself to work on the parts of the game that aren't your best that aren't your strong suit that you didn't want to work on before because they're so difficult or because you didn't think it would help when you're supersonic legend every mechanic must be mastered consistently you should be able to hit every mechanic you go for nine times out of ten and you've really only got game sense to worry about and rotations and you know again the things that we all need to work on recovery boost management and demos but at supersonic legend you should really have every mechanic under your belt and this is where you can kind of start pushing yourself to be very very creative in the game you can start doing things that nobody else has done or you can start doing things that nobody else can do because you're the only person practicing it but this is really where you need to start pushing the boundaries of the game and just testing what is and isn't possible if you take players like Astral or Jureus, for example, these are players that are so good at the game that they have just started pushing themselves to do new things, to do things that nobody else has done. And so it's really important at this level that you are just consistently pushing yourself to invent new ways to do things, to create new things, to be creative in how you play, and just enjoy the game at the highest level. Of course, the game is fun all the way throughout, but this is really where the game becomes an art form, and you and your teammates have to be extremely creative to find new ways to score on your opponents. If you found anything in this video to be helpful, then go ahead and click the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, turn on notifications, let me know in the comments that you liked this video, or let me know that you didn't like it. What didn't you like about it? What could I have done better for you in the next video? Because that's what I'll work on for the next video. I want to give a quick shout out to all my big brains who are watching. Thank you so much for being a part of the big brain gang. I want to welcome all the new viewers from free to play, or if you're just new to Rocket League in general, welcome. Thank you so much for checking the channel out and watching this video. I'd really appreciate if you'd consider hitting that subscribe button 
done. We're trying to hit 100K before the year ends and we're really, really close to that goal. We're on track for it. We should be able to obtain it, but it would be super, super awesome of you to help us out achieving that goal by hitting that subscribe button and letting me know what kind of videos you wanna see in the future. You can join the Discord with the link down below as well. Got all my social medias down there if you wanna follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. But most importantly, and as always, thanks for watching.